the Dao was just bringing up the topic of Nimitta Ajahn. In order to understand what is meant by Nimitta, we have to talk about the truth of this real moment. If nothing arises at all, can there be any Nimitta? In order to understand what is meant by Nimitta, Nimitta of what? Of that which is now appearing. Why it is Nimitta? Because it does not appear as it is because it arises in false way in split seconds. How can that is now appearing as it is? So very rapidly, from one moment to another moment, different function. And even right now, as much as we can understand, is the nimitta of that which experiences an object is different from nimitta of that which is there but cannot experience anything at all. Just learn to understand the difference between the two kinds of nimitta. The mitta of that which experiences, seeing sees many, many moments arising and falling away, unknown. So it is the nimitta of seeing. When we talk about that which experiences visible object which now appears, there must be the reality which experiences that, not only one single moment, so many, many moments now. So it covers up the truth that it's now just arises and falls away instantly, never to arise again. What appears is only the succession of the many experiencing different kind of jitta. But what appears is only seeing. The jitta which arises before seeing does not appear. The jitta which follows the seeing does not appear. Many jittas, many different reality which experiences object by different function, different characteristics, unknown because they do not appear. What is now appearing is only nimitta of seeing, but not one single moment of seeing. That's why the truth is that whatever is conditioned to arise falls away instantly. That's why Buddha have come from eons and eons accumulation of ignorance to realize the truth of this very moment, that the truth is that seeing is one single moment and there are many moments of that which can experience object as we call it jitta. But they do not appear at all in life. What appears is only seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching. So this is nimitta of that which can experience an object. So we begin to understand what is meant, nimitta. It's that which is not there, but the succession of the arising and falling away so rapidly. So what appears seems like there is seeing all the time right now. But in truth, not a single moment of seeing at all, only nimitta of the succession of seeing is now appearing as there is seeing, but actually there are many moments of seeing. This is the mitra of one characteristic of a reality which arises to experience visible objects. At any time, it is only the nimitta of that which arises to experience visible objects. So we call it I see or seeing. The nimitta of nama. But there is not just one kind of the reality which experiences an object. There are so many kinds of that which experiences object. One single moment is different from any other moment in the past or in the future, only once in samsara. So now, no one at all, only the nimitta of seeing, which arises to see what is seen, that's all. And what is seen? So many moments of the reality which arises and fall away as nimitta of that which is seen as something. Not one only single dot of that which impinge on the eye base. 
So actually, there's no one and no thing, because what is there is not there anymore. So very rapidly, unknown, because right understanding is not enough to understand that seeing is not I see, but the truth is that it is real, it's a reality, it is conditioned to arise to see, that's all, to experience an object. So in life, no matter what life, no one at all. And the word no one, see, what does it mean? No one can imagine no one. What does it mean? Not anything appearing together. Only one reality appears, so it appears clear because the other reality does not arise and appear like now together with seeing or that which is seen. So one lives in the world of nimitta, not understanding the truth of a very, very subtle reality conditioned to arise and fall away secretly, unknowingly all the time. That's why Buddha has come to understand, to realize the truth of this moment as no one and no thing. Only the nimitta of rupa, nimitta of vetana, nimitta of sanya, nimitta of sankhara, nimitta of vinyana, kana, all appear as nimitta of one reality, like seeing now. It's the nimitta of seeing. And rupa, which is seen, is the nimitta of that, not just one dot many, many dots, so it appears as that which is seen before it is taken for things, people. So in reality, do you see kunina now, or what is seen, or is there kunina? In truth, otherwise there must be something or someone, but when we heard about there is no one and no thing. What does it mean? It's the absolute truth because it's not there anymore. What is seen is gone and the seeing is gone. Each moment, nothing's left. So actually, can there be anyone or anything? What appears is only the nimitta of the succession of what arises in false way. So very rapidly, that's all. Even right now. Seeing now is not seeing a moment ago. That which is seen is not the one which is seen a moment ago. From moment to moment in samsara, in life, past, present, and future, exactly the same. In darkness, whatever is there arises and falls away is not known. So it's not in light, but in darkness of ignorance until the Tathagata has come to realize the truth. So each word of him is the true word about reality. Never change. We can prove what is there now. Even while there is seeing, there is thinking in between, and there can be hearing in between. But seeing doesn't appear as it has gone at moment of hearing and thinking because of the nimitta of seeing. Is that not true? Hi, Konstantin. I cannot see the difference between seeing and the nimitta of seeing, how do they differ from each other? Seeing is a moment of performing the function of seeing the yes. object clearly, while the other reality, Chetasika, which arises with seeing, does not experience the object as clear as itta, as the seeing itself. That's why it is seeing. It's not the jitta which arises before seeing, 
the chitta which arises before seeing does not perform the function of seeing, but it does not appear. It's only the meta of the experiencing. And when it is moment of seeing right now, the chitta before seeing and after seeing arises and fall away in split second, the same as seeing, but they do not appear, see. So it's the limita of the reality which experiences the object. But no matter when and where, seeing arises just to see, never change its function. And the other citta arising before or after it never changed its function too. Each moment, each reality is conditioned just to arise as different characteristic and different function and then gone, never to return. But what appears is only nimitta. And when we talk about the reality which experiences an object, now seeing sees, it experiences visible object that can be known now. But there cannot be just one single moment of seeing. There must be other moment to condition seeing to arise. With uh, the Panjatavara Vajna, the adverting consciousness to the Rupa, which impinge on the eye base, seeing cannot arise. But it's not moment which adverting to the object. It sees after the adverting consciousness has fallen away. It conditioned the next moment to experience by seeing only one moment. And then the other moment does not see. It is conditioned to arise after seeing. It experiences the same object as seeing, but it does not perform the function of seeing. It performs the function of receiving the object which is experienced by seeing, because the object which impinges on the eye best hasn't fallen away yet. So how can the other object be the object for that? impinged on the eye base and hasn't fallen away. But the function, the reality which arises after seeing, does not appear at all. That's why the nimitta of the experiencing of visible object is now appearing. Only the nimitta of the reality which experiences an object, the same object. And there can be thinking by then. There can be the understanding that thinking is not moment of seeing. It thinks about other objects, see. But before it can arise, the process of seeing has to end up. Otherwise, there cannot be other moment of experiencing another object. And there must be bowanga in between, life continuum. It's not the moment of this yet. So now nothing appears in a day, only seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, thinking. That's all. So these are many, many moments of process, experiencing different objects. So what appears is only the nimitta of that which arises and falls away, experience an object through different ways. Not only one single moment of citta or experiencing an object. So the point is that after hearing, the considering of what it heard and consider whether it's right or wrong, true or not, to be truthful, to the truth, such a barami is needed. Otherwise, it's not truthful to the truth. So it goes astray by thinking and considering by one's own thought. But it cannot change the truth at all. Nothing can change the truth, no matter who knows or not. The moment of thinking is not the moment of seeing. But since they arise in succession so very rapidly, it does not show up as this is not seeing, it's only thinking, because it's the nimitta of 
that which can experience an object. So the object is different, but the characteristic which can experience the object is the same, but with different characteristic of citta. It experiences the object by way of seeing, it experiences the object by way of hearing, and so on, in a day, that's all. So, what are the nimittas of what are there in a day, I and thing all the time, right or wrong, true or not? If there's no understanding of the truth, one just lives in ignorance and nimitta, taking that which appears as permanent until the changing happenings, different ways of life in a day, accident or and different things. But who knows that it changes each moment by conditions. The conditions condition the arising. As soon as it has arisen, it falls away, the end of conditions. Just condition to arise, that's all. And then it has to fall away. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes. Very clear. Are we Without thinking, can it be something? Or is just that which is seen to the baby? newly born baby sees but not know what is seen at all. Hearing, no understanding of the meaning of the sound, the voice which is heard, not enough condition yet. That's why very few moments of experiencing any object without understanding one takes it for something permanent. So in order to let go wrong understanding and ignorance, it has to be the right understanding of what is there as it is. Otherwise, I and thing must be there as usual. But when there is the understanding of each different ones, each one cannot be taken for anything at all. Seeing is seeing no matter who or when or where or what. Seeing is conditioned to arise. It needs the eye based and the visible object and the other conditions to condition moment of seeing has to arise and then fall away right now. And this is what is meant by the Thakata, Buddha, the one who has come to realize the truth of what is there as it is, which is not known at all before. But after hearing the truth, it's time to understand whether it's true or not. Where am I? Is there I? Seeing, see, and then falls away instantly, and hearing just arises after hearing, sound, and then falls away instantly. So, how can that be I or something? Only the succession of the reality so very rapidly is just like the magician playing trick to be seen something which is not as it is. Moment of seeing that is not what it is at all. It's only the shadow or the nimitta of that which arises and falls away. 